Happy Friday, Baylor family, and welcome to Lariat TV News. I'm Sarah Gill. And I'm George Schroeder, bringing you this week's newscast from outside the studio to adhere to social distancing guidelines. In this week's newscast, we'll meet a student who recently underwent brain surgery, catch up with the Golden Wave Band, and preview the Bears' opening football game this Saturday. All that and more on Lariat TV News today. Let's get started. Students will spend their spring break in Dia Doloso in the classroom this year as Baylor announced the cancellation of those two events. Modifications were made to the spring 2021 calendar due to COVID-19. LTVN's Grace Smith spoke with an administrator to get the answers behind these changes. Uh, please God help us get there, return to some sense of normal planning by February, March, April and get things behind us. The Office of the Provost released this statement delaying the start of the spring 2021 semester to January 19th. However, this extension of winter break is taking the place of spring break entirely. We wanted to condense the calendar to limit the number of times that students leave campus and return to campus because that's an opportunity to both spread the virus and to bring it back. Baylor isn't alone in their decision to change their spring break plans. Spring break isn't, isn't canceled, spring break is shifted to January and so folks will have a longer break at, at Christmas. We're never going to do anything that would put our students, faculty, staff uh, at, at risk. Students have mixed feelings about this new schedule. I was upset, but then I realized Baylor's just trying to do what they can to keep us on campus and I'd much rather be on campus than be online and at home. Just have like a week to just relax in between like everything that goes on second semester and we don't get to do that so that's pretty disappointing. This new spring schedule can be found on the university's website. For Lariat TV News, I'm Grace Smith. Baylor is one of the top five schools in Texas. Baylor moved up three spots to number 76 out of all the universities in the nation in the annual U.S. News and World Report survey. Despite the challenges a pandemic might pose, Baylor remains the second highest ranked university in the Big 12 for the ninth year in a row. Baylor's programs were also high on that list with a number eight in best undergraduate entrepreneurship programs, 25th in innovative schools, and 31st in undergraduate teaching. Car theft is on the rise at Baylor. The university issued a safety alert Monday in the wake of numerous thefts on or near campus. The burglaries occurred on campus at the parking lot of the Stacey Riddle Forum in 8th Street Garage. Two car thefts were also reported very close to campus. 28 other thefts of motor vehicles have been reported at off-campus student housing centers in the last three months. Many of those are items being taken from unlocked vehicles. BUPD advises students to lock their cars and remove valuable items to better protect your belongings. The stresses of college are enough to weigh any bear down. But one of Baylor's students battled more than just a heavy workload last semester. She underwent brain surgery. LTVN's Madison Martin tells us Jacqueline Black's story. In January 2006, Jackie Black was just six years old when she bumped her head on a tree. Though at the time this seemed like a small accident, it became a beautiful miracle that saved her. But playing hide and seek, I hit my head on that tree and then, you know, I took to the nurse and then doctor and then cat scan and then that's when they found a huge tumor size of an orange but if it wasn't for that tree i wouldn't be alive today the malignant tumor was revealed as a grade 3 anaplastic astrocytoma a rare form of brain cancer with no known cure and very little survival rate i was diagnosed at six so at that time it was really hard and then I was a survivor at, at nine years of age. You know, then the seizure started at junior year of high school. Although the tumor was successfully removed, it left long-term remnants of memory loss, PTSD, and epileptic seizures. Her oncologist said, look, you don't have to come anymore to get the MRIs for the cancer. You have to come get the MRIs for your epilepsy, which is a result of the radiation. So the very thing that saved her life many years later, caused a secondary neurological impact. Though she still lives with the nuance of cancer's effects, Jackie's spirit carries her to continue her passion for art and achieve her dreams of earning her degree. At least even if she forgets everything, education is not about what we can regurgitate. 
It's about being in the moment and about at least for the moment that that teacher is telling her something, she's enriched. Using her own journey for inspiration, Black and her mother create the Ready or Not Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting pediatric brain cancer research. I make speeches every year in front of 500 people for my um, foundation, and I told them that that's when I tell myself, you know, think of think of the others. Like, never tell yourself like, don't feel bad for yourself like that. Like, I'm suffering the most. Because you're not. There's always someone in a worse state than you. Now, Jackie Black continues to use her story as a catalyst to raise awareness and funds for pediatric cancer treatment. For Laria TV News, I'm Madison Martin. Up next, we'll hear the sweet sound of Baylor's Golden Wave marching band as they prepare for game day. We'll also hear from Dale from Vertical and Dr. Burt Burleson about religion in the time of COVID. Don't go anywhere. At Baylor, our lights shine while we push our limits and guide the way. At Baylor, our lights shine as we're making connections and making an impression as leaders and as part of something bigger. Baylor's light shines around the world, but it starts in each of us. Baylor, where lights shine bright. COVID numbers are going in the right direction for Baylor this last week. The positivity rate has dipped below 5% this past week, and the number of positive cases has dropped to an average of less than 10 per day. Cumulative cases will likely break the 1,000 mark in the next week, going back to August 1st, but the daily rate has significantly changed. Student ministries are vital to Baylor, but not immune to coronavirus. From Vertical's Dale Wallace to Baylor's Dr. Burt Burleson, ministry in the time of COVID looks a little bit different. I discovered exactly how local student ministries are still shining bright through it all. Baylor is the home to countless student ministry organizations, most of which are heavily involved with students across campus. However, outreach and events this year might look a lot different. Usually students gather in large groups and attend worship and praise services together. Uh, yeah, things are completely different. Usually we're a Monday night, 9 p.m. gathering of students, sometimes thousands of students in the same room, Waco Hall, Farrell Center. And now we are gathered virtually in houses and rooms with our roommates and friends that we've been in contact with, uh, dorm mates, people like that, that students have already been connected to. But I actually think uh, the most important thing we've had to encourage students, and really the, the thing that was even true pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, is that you know, invitations and information best come through relationships and through friendships. And so this year, we've started to end every night with discussion questions to kind of guide those conversations with roommates and with friends. And what we've seen is an incredible amount of fruit because what I know about college students is spiritual conversations don't necessarily come naturally. Vertical Ministries won't be gathering in person anytime soon. But until then, Dale leaves students with this heartfelt message. I would just encourage students, one, Jesus invites us to come to him and he will give us rest for our souls. He'll give us rest from our loneliness, from the, the, the shortcomings, from our sin. Like, I, I think that's an invitation for everyone is to, to seek Jesus, turn to him. And that's what's been good for my own soul. Vertical Ministries isn't the only organization making some serious changes this year. Baylor's very own chapel program has been altered to be completely virtual. Uh, we're not having all the places where we can connect and and share with them uh, the kind of programs we have. And the reason why we're doing chapels at the length that, that we have is because there's so many moments in a student's life every day where someone says, you'll need to go online and do X, Y, and Z. Uh, so uh, for us, it's been you know a better presence uh, with regard to social media, Instagram in particular. And we're going to be doing some assessment uh, through the questions you get at the end of chapel. We're going to do some assessment along the way to get a feel for the impact of, of the virtual experience. No matter how long these ministries and others have to remain virtual, they will continue to make every effort to effectively reach students. For Larry at TV News, I'm George Schroeder. Spreading faith near and far. That's Baylor's mission, and this week's Baylor Mission Week is filled with trips and service opportunities in Waco and abroad. 
LTVN's Winston Margarita shows us where Mission Week can take you. According to Missions in Public Life, Mission Week provides mission education and raises awareness about the possibilities to grow, love, and serve, both through Baylor mission trips as well as with many global and community partners. This year's event consisted of Zoom sessions and presentations by service organizations. I spoke with Dominique McShay from Missions in Public Life to learn more. Uh, so we have our global missions, but we also have our uh, local ministries with our urban mission teams and youth ministry teams. Uh, so with that, it's pretty important to be able to create an opportunity to highlight both of those. Uh, so some of our partners are global focused and some of our sessions that we've hosted this week are pretty global focused, but we also have had sessions such as Loving Where You Live and highlighting organizations such as the Waco Habitat for Humanity and Talitha Kuhn um, and some others that are doing some really great work locally to one, have an opportunity to share kind of how is the, our local community being impacted in this time and what some of those needs are and how students can be connected um, domestically and in Waco, even if they're not able uh, to travel abroad right now. For Lariat TV News, I'm Winston Margaritas. The football players aren't the only team making their debut this Saturday at McLean Stadium. Baylor's Golden Wave Marching Band has been practicing for weeks preparing for the opener. They too have had to make some adjustments in their game day plans. And LTVN's Tim Longoria tells us what those changes are to help have a safe game day. The sound of Baylor University makes its 2020 debut this Saturday the 19th for the football game against the University of Houston. The Baylor Golden Wave Marching Band has prepared for months for an in-game opportunity. We'll just uh, walk over, possibly march. We're going to check and see if it's possible for us to march. We're still waiting on the answers for that, but march over to the stadium about an hour before, and then we'll get into the stands. We'll do some mic checks and make sure everything is, is ready to go. The band won't be able to perform on the field um, this season as of now. But in order to abide by social distancing rules, who is going to perform and at which game? So they split us up into three bands, and each band has around 100 people. And um, we have bear tribes also, like split up in our sections. And only like one or two bear tribes get to go to each game in each section. There's nothing quite like the energy from the band on game day. Even though there won't be any on-field performances for the time being, the band has taken their efforts above and beyond in trying to make the games feel as normal as possible. We're amplifying the band in the stands because there's only a hundred and then we'll perform our pregame uh, routine, which is, well, not routine, just the music aspect of it from the stands. Our halftime uh, will be, uh, we've videoed it. So we've done a halftime show and then we recorded it. And um, so uh, it's, uh, it will be just be played on the big screen during the halftime. Uh, we try to take every, um, practice, every rehearsal, every meeting with a great sense of um, gratitude and humility. We're, you know, every day we get an opportunity to be out there. Um, it's, it's, it's a great blessing for us. For Larry at TV News, I'm Tim Longoria. Baylor Law School's Vision for Leadership Conference wrapped up Thursday with a couple of big name guests. Best-selling author John Grisham was interviewed by fellow author Talmadge Boston. Grisham's legal thrillers have focused on wrongs and inequities in our legal system, and there are more than 300 million of his books in print worldwide. Nine of his novels have been turned into feature films. He told Baylor Law students it's imperative for them to lead in the many venues in which they live and work. 50% of all Americans do not have access to civil justice, and we're about to see a whole new wave of people who are being, are going to be mistreated because of evictions and health care and all sorts of things that are happening now because of the pandemic. With the rising use of social distancing, students are eager for any face-to-face -face interaction. National Panhellenic Council encourages students to step up and join them in unity. LTVN's Madison Martin talked to them about their desire to enrich the community through brother and sisterhood. National Panhellenic Council, also known as the Divine Nine, was chartered May 4, 1994, a community for international, historically African-American fraternities and sororities. It's a lifelong commitment. Um, you get to deal with networking, which is like outside of the sorority thing, networking, service opportunities. Our biggest focus is service. I would also say like a lifelong friendship. The people that you 
are crossing with line brothers or line sisters, um, those are relationships you'll have for the rest of your life. President of MPHC, Imani Sullivan, invites newcomers to join in the expansion of student experience while reminding people of the foundation their Greek community was built upon. Being historically Black, it's that can be kind of intimidating, I guess, for someone who isn't Black. I don't see that. But um, I don't think that should ever be something that holds someone back from joining a community that they feel that they belong in. Though the Divine Nine is historically rooted with African-American culture, they have grown with the changing times to encourage inclusion, welcoming students of different backgrounds and cultures with open arms. I know it's a little scary and a little intimidating because, you know, you might not feel connected with that culture or you're just, you know, afraid to put yourself out there. But sometimes you have to take a leap of faith and do it because if you don't, then you're never going to realize the people that are waiting for you that are going to be your family or that are going to be your closest friends. Strawberry cheesecake, banana pudding, and butter pecan sound like desserts, but they're actually healthy drink flavors offered at the new Waco Nutrition and Energy Bar. LTVN's Bryn Shavia Jordan sat down with the owners who share why each sip is what your body needs. This is Sadie and Aaron, the owners of the new Waco Nutrition and Energy Bar, but it started in Temple, Texas, when these two met at a nutrition bar, falling in love with each other and the business. After having an eye on the building since November, a failed lease prior to them resulted in them opening in the middle of a pandemic, and they say it's been good for their business. Definitely being able to impact, you know, Baylor University, um, giving, you know, the college students a healthy, healthier alternative um, that's affordable and it tastes good. Um, so we really just thought that would be a really good route to be able to um, reach out to. Officially opening on August 6th, with word of mouth and Instagram, this business has begun to grow. I'm super excited having Waco Nutrition close to campus. I come all the time. Um, it's just a quick and easy, healthy um, alternative to, to meals or if you want it for a snack. Um, I'm in here, you know, quite, quite frequently. So I'm super happy that it's um, close to campus. The couple's goal is to bring nutrition in the form of teas and shakes. With Herbalife as the foundation for every product, each sip provides 21 essential minerals, nutrients, and vitamins. The favorites have definitely honestly probably been the teas. Um, the favorite tea is definitely Berry Monfries. It was the first tea I usually, I think I posted on Instagram. Um, and everybody loved the colors of it. And they were like, I don't know what this is, but I want it. And so that was definitely like a hit for the first Month. With the nutrition bar close to campus, students are expressing their excitement on social media and in person. We're grateful for all of y'all who have stopped by, um, and we're looking forward to meeting everybody else that comes in. For Laird TV News, I'm Bryn Shavia Jordan. If there's anyone else who knows a thing or two about nutrition, it's our Baylor athletes who will preview up next. We'll also hear from head football coach Dave Aranda discussing his debut game against Houston set to take place Saturday. Stay tuned for sports. The best and brightest are drawn to Baylor, where those from many backgrounds with many talents shine together before casting their light outward to illuminate the world. Through transformational learning opportunities that are grounded in Christian faith and service, and research that impacts lives and communities. Baylor University. A place where lights shine bright. The wait is finally over. After months of uncertainty, football will be back on the banks of the Brazos this Saturday. Here's what you need to know about the Bears' Texas size tilt with the Houston Cougars this weekend. It's time to party like it's 1995. For the first time in 25 years, the Bears are set to host the Houston Cougars for a matchup that hasn't been seen since the two squads were in the now-defunct Southwest Conference. We've talked about that already some as a staff and just the tradition and the rivalry. And, and we'll, build, we'll build on that as we go throughout the week. But, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for our rivalry or the history. I've got a lot of respect for, for Houston right now, just as they stand and how, they're, how Dana's building that team. Second-year head coach Dana Holgerson and the Cougars are coming off of a 4-8 and eight campaign in which they redshirted 35 players, including five seniors. 
Among those coming back are quarterback Clayton Toon, who threw for 1,533 yards and 11 touchdowns last year, as well as a pair of explosive wide receivers in Marquez Stevenson and Keith Corbin, who both have well over 1,000 yards receiving in their collegiate careers. Seeing Houston on film, it's been pretty cool to watch them. They're super fast. Their quarterback is a great quarterback back there. He can throw the ball. He can run, too. And seeing their receivers, it's going to impose a great challenge for us because they got a lot of speed out there. The Bears are no slouches on the offensive side of the ball themselves, where they returned seven starters, including senior quarterback Charlie Brewer. Brewer is the only returning FBS quarterback who had 20 or more passing touchdowns and 11 or more rushing touchdowns in the 2019 season. Charlie hasn't, I don't think he's, he hasn't had a bad day yet of camp. You know, he's just, he's, he's leading this offense. You know, he's uh, putting the ball where it needs to be. And he's just, you can just tell he's playing with a confidence about himself. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for Charlie. I think this is going to be a big year for him. The Bears and the Cougars are set for an 11 a.m. kickoff at McLean Stadium on Saturday, and the game will be televised on Fox. For Lariat TV News, I'm Nate Smith. After a hard-fought scoreless tie in their season opener against TCU last week, Baylor soccer will hit the road on Friday to take on Texas Tech in Lubbock this weekend. Here's head coach Paul Jobson on how the Bears plan to attack the Red Raiders coming off of a draw. And you can measure uh, all you want. You can say, hey, it's their first game, they haven't played, or they're veterans, or they're at home, they'll be excited, or you know, they were out because of corona, how many kids have actually been training for the last two weeks. But the reality is we can't, we can't calculate and we can't measure. We've got to look at you know, the things that, that we've got to accomplish this week, and we've done a great job through our training process to prepare uh, best we can um, to be the best team that we can be against Tech. Who's a really good what pick to win the league this year, uh, rightfully so, um, because of their, their their veteran players that they have coming back. Grab your running shoes because along with Baylor's other fall sports, cross country is back. The team has been safely training in hopeful preparation of a fall schedule, and their wish came true. Their first meet is coming up at the Abilene Christian Invitational next Friday, the 25th. We're just so blessed to be able to have something to kind of circle on our calendars at this point because there's been so much that's up in the air. So we're so pleased that. You know, the Big 12 made a decision to just try. Like, let's try. Let's try to have a season. Let's, let's go forward with it. Our biggest meet is the Big 12 meet, right? That, that's really not that many people. There are some huge races out there, um, but a lot of them aren't really, you know, huge this year. It's not going to be that big. There's not many, that many conferences competing this year. And so I think our biggest meet might not be that many people. We're going to Abilene this next uh, Friday. And just to have those meets that we've been able to kind of put back in gives our training a whole, a whole new purpose. The defending Big 12 champion Bear Volleyball Squad is set to take the court in the Farrell Center for the first time this season on Friday when they'll play their annual green and gold scrimmage. Coach McGuire's team is returning five starters from last year's national semifinalist team, including a 2019 AVCA Player of the Year in Yasiana Presley and preseason all Big 12 selections Marike Vandermark and Hannah Sedwick. The team also added a pair of skilled transfers in middle blocker Lake Harper from Central Florida and outside hitter Lauren Harrison from North Carolina. The Bears will kick off their Big 12 title defense next Friday when they'll play Kansas in the first match of a two-match series in Lawrence. From brain surgery to Baylor football, that's all we've got for this week's newscast. Be sure to watch us on BaylorLariat.com, the Waco City Channel, or catch us every Friday in the Lariat's Morning Buzz. Thanks for watching Lariat TV News. Tune in next Friday for more student-focused content about Baylor for Baylor.